Does adversity make a man or does adversity reveal a man? These are things that we're going to talk about today on the Get Your Shift Together podcast. Got an amazing guest. Let's get it. Shift Together Men's Podcast with your host, Dr. Myron Edmonds. Let's go. We in the building. Let's go. Get your yes, shift sir. together. We're back. We're back. How you feeling this week? Feeling great. Feeling great. Excited about uh, just so much that's going on, man. Uh, but I'm really excited about the conversation today. And I'm not just saying that. I told you. Remember I told you? Oh, yeah. You told me. I'm, I'm looking forward to the conversation today. Hey, goodness. Of course, you know, you're, you're not given to, you know, excitement on stuff like this at all. So. I'm a hype man. Listen. I know. Yeah. I always say every – my wife gets on me all the time. She's like, you're always talking about how something is the best you've ever had, the worst you've ever had. There's not a lot of middle ground. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but I will tell you this is – Probably one of the most powerful conversations. Uh, the most. I said the most. One of the oh, most. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you're watching this on um, Facebook right now, because we're streaming this live, go ahead and share this or tag a few people in for this conversation. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notification so that as new episodes come out, you get them before everyone else does. You get all the notifications. We want to keep this conversation going. And listen, if you are listening to this on your podcasting platform of choice, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, whatever, we need you. We need you to leave us a rating, leave us a review, make sure that you share it. But we need your ratings and your reviews because here's what happens. Other people looking for good content need to see your rating and your review. So please do that right now as you are listening to this podcast so yeah myron got a lot of good stuff going on this week absolutely i want to shout out though our sponsor today fla joseph in the one game my guy it's oh, got yeah, spell that. uh in y a and then i just i peace out after that M-W- yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, moi, yeah moi. <laughs> Uh, Joseph does amazing work with really trying to build a generation of millionaires with a purpose. And he has yeah. a program called Financial Legacy Academy. I've gone through the program. Kimon has gone through the program. It has really helped put us in the right position financially. If you know you need that in your life, he is our sponsor today. You want to go to my website, myronevans.com forward slash money and join the Financial Legacy Academy and get your shift together as it concerns your money. And uh, yeah, that's where we at. Look, man. <laughs> Woo! Without further ado, I don't even know. Like, we, uh, listen. So, all right, let me set this up. So, I didn't realize, and you'll hear me say this in this interview. Um, our guest today is Reggie George, who is the founder and the CEO of Father Figure uh, Apparel Brand. Now, funny thing is, I've been seeing his apparel brand on social media. You know, now that I'm doing all this stuff on men, I'm always running. I mean, in my feed on Instagram, it's, you know, Deion Sanders comes up all the time. And I saw yeah. Deion Sanders with this apparel on. And honestly, I was like, yo, that's dope. Didn't realize that I had actually met Reggie um, briefly at the 360 man conference that Eric Thomas put on in Atlanta. We had a brief exchange there, which he reminded me of. And anyway, so we built a, sort of a relationship on social media because we have similar platforms and uh honestly man i thought he i thought that this interview was going to be more or less kimon uh a guy who started uh a business based on a good message um you know maybe because his dad wasn't in his life and i just want you to know i was totally wrong about the origins of Mm -hmm. the father figure brand and you know i do want to shout him out man we'll talk more uh, about the brand and, and really how you can take advantage of being able to support his business. But before we do that, I think it's only important, I mean, only appropriate rather that you like hear the why behind yeah. The business. Yeah. And what it brought me to, Kimon, is, is it brought me to the subject 
it, it initially was about business and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But after it was over, I was like, oh, this is about adversity. This is about what makes a man. Is it adversity that makes a man or is it adversity that reveals a man? And I'm really interested to hear your thoughts and the thoughts of the brothers as we go through this. But anyway, listen, y'all, y'all get in the comments and talk to us. Those of you who are listening, um, you listen, we, we we want your feedback on this. Keep in, we keep on talked about, you know, sharing reviews and stuff with us. But this conversation right here, post in our Facebook group. Let's talk about this. This is some serious stuff. Anything you want to say before we jump no, in, man? Can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> can't wait. Let's see. Let's hear it. All right, man. Let's do it. Reggie George is here with us today. He represents the uh, father figure brand. And uh, without further ado, Reggie, man, welcome to the podcast. How you doing, brother? Myron, I'm I'm well, bro. I appreciate you, man. It it is definitely. Um, some alignment on Instagram, you know, you might have to dig a little bit, but, but you know what I'm saying? Like, man, when you, um, and especially, you know, as faith based, faith, faith based men, man, you know, you know, divine alignment when you see it, man. So whether it's on Instagram or wherever, bro, like I know we here today because of divine alignment, bro. Yo, it's funny. I was talking to my wife the other day uh, to your point. And, you know, this is something that a lot of brothers need to understand, even beyond the conversation we're going to have. And that's, um, yeah, you're going to find what you're looking for. Um, you know, I asked God, I said, God, just start, you know, positioning, you know, send send the right folk, send people out to add value to my life, uh, folks that will inspire me. And, um, you know, I was telling my wife, we were looking for a car for her because we gave our car to my daughter. And uh, when I, once I kind of eyed the car that we were looking for, isn't it crazy, like how you start seeing everybody with that car? You, you ever had that experience? You everybody. Seeing, like, man, where, where, it's like everybody got this. I wasn't looking for it before. You know what I'm saying? Right. Once you start looking for it, you start seeing it. Same regard, man. God set this thing up, man. And so, man, I'm glad to have you here today. But this brand, bro, this, I mean, this is honestly the branding and the messaging that you're doing, man, is phenomenal on so many levels. We see a lot of faith brands and some of the brands, they trash, you know what I'm saying? Your stuff, man, is positive. The message is just critical. Man, what what inspired the the father figure brand? Brother, how'd you get into this? I mean, where did this come from? We see the need, but what's the story behind it? Yeah, man, it's it's definitely uh, a story behind the brand, man. And and you know, a lot of times, even even when you're aligning with people, sometimes um, in this space, they think it's just about good looking apparel, the nice T-shirts or hoodies or hats. So and, and a lot of times it is, bro. I can't I can't even lie, man. There's some there's some stuff I, I see out there that's dope and they're just genuinely an apparel brand, man. But mm-hmm. uh, the F2, the father figure movement, man, the, the father figure brand definitely was was uh, was built out of adversity, man. It was built out of um really having to step into being a father figure in, in the fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, it, like you, man, I'm, I'm, um, I'm a husband, man. I've been married 21 years, man. Uh, I have a, I have a set of 16 year old daughters, man. Shout out to Kennedy and Camden. They'll kill me if I don't shout them out. But, um, man, when my daughters were 13, my wife and I got a call maybe three days before they got out of school. Um, they were in eighth grade. They're juniors now. Um, so we got a call, man, that um, a 15-year-old little boy, time my girls were 13, man, a 15-year-old little boy um, stabbed Camden in the head with a pair of scissors at school in the cafeteria, man. Um, and, I, and I'm saying, like, stabbed her, bro. He stabbed her behind her ear um, with a teacher issue pair of scissors. Bro, you you talking about the scariest call, man, the most frantic call. Um but these scissors, man, first of all, her sister, her twin sister is right there, man. She having to watch her bleed out in there. this is in the cafeteria, man, of a of a of an intermediate school. And um you know, she have to watch her sister bleed out and pass out, man. Me and my wife, we both frantic. My wife actually gets to the school before I do. Luckily, you know, from a from a male perspective, because um, she actually laid her eyes on this little boy, man. Um, but by the grace of God, man, God 
had me pass up to school and we and I went straight to the hospital, man. But um when we got to the hospital, the doctor had told us, man, she was she was in and out of consciousness, but the scissors had punctured her skull and punctured her brain. And um man, it, it, it caused her to have blood clot, blood clots on her brain. Um so they said, man, we gotta we were in we were here locally, but we had to care flight her about thirty minutes away to, to Fort Worth, um, Cook's children's man, because at the time the physician told us if we didn't go then, man, she wasn't gonna make it. Um, on, due man. to the blood clot, bro. Um, and Myron and, and, and most men at this point, everybody asking the same question, man, like, how do you keep your composure? How are you not going crazy, man? But um, I'm hoping as men and as fathers, man, everybody is thinking the same thing I was. As angry as I was when you find out it's a 15-year-old little boy, man, man, my thing is about my babies. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? My thing is about, you know, and then when you tell me something is life or death, truly, man, like when, when you have to watch your child get strapped into a, a helicopter to get care flighted, man, and everybody know how how detrimental that is, man. And if and if you ever been in any hood in in America, the scariest part, man, is that um, when they care flight her to this hospital, me and my wife and my sister, man, we drive to the hospital, and again, I'm praying the, the entire time, like God, just keep my baby, yes, sir. Just, yes, sir. you know, yes. just hold on to her, and. Um, we are met at the hospital by two chaplains. And bro, you know, when, when you, um, when you met by a chaplain, bro, that's not, that's not good. Mm -hmm. It's not good. Mm -hmm. And and at that point, man, you know, the, the, the reds, reds come out. Like I'm, you know, like no disrespect to y'all, man, but why are we not greeted by a physician or a surgeon? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, what is the deal with being greeted by um, two chaplains? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they told us it was protocol, but that also told my wife and I how severe this thing was, man. So we get there, I mean, we met in a hallway by a neurosurgeon who tells us, like, man, your baby got three blood clots on her brain. Uh, we need y'all to sign here, 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 and here. We got to go. I'm going to make a question mark incision in her brain. We're going to remove her skull. Um, we're going to remove the blood clots. And um, and we got to go immediately, man. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a, a waiting room type deal. It wasn't. And, um, and man, she, she, when she underwent her first brain surgery, man, which was eight and a half hours. Uh, so, you know, as a parent, and especially as a father, bro, um, those are eight and a half hours that I'll never forget. Yeah. Never forget, bro. Like, and, and you know, it's different. And again, just going back to the brand and where the foundation comes from is that I, I, I know my wife felt the kind of way, my mother, my father, everybody. But as a father, bro, when somebody not steals, when somebody robs you of your protective piece. <laughs> uh, Come on, sir. Man, it's it's uh, man, that thing is so like if if you've never had your your cup emptied out, that thing will empty it quick. It'll empty it quick, man. When you're trying to mentally and even spiritually, man, navigate mm -hmm. an eight-hour brain surgery, man. That mm -hmm. first of all, I don't I don't even know um, what my baby status is, man. This is not one of those surgeries where they're saying like every hour we'll give you. An update, an update or, like, update or something. Yeah, yeah. Nah, this is this is like, man, we trying to save her life. So we'll we'll update you when we come out. But um, man, eight and a half hours later, man, this neurosurgeon come out and man, our village is so strong, bro. He comes out really to an audience, my mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably mm -hmm. seventy five people in this waiting room when he come out. And uh bro, he, he is like your baby's brain was beat up. Your baby's brain was swollen. Mm. There was a lot of bleeding. 
He says, man, I had to call in another surgeon to help me stop this bleeding on your baby's brain. Come on, man. Hmm. And, uh, bro, he looks at me. And he like, dad, your baby is minute to minute. And I'm like, what do you what what you mean when you say minute? Like I've heard day to day, hour to hour. Like, what do you mean when you say minute to minute? And he like, man, like, and again, um, am I even from from the manly piece? That's the first time I really um I really kind of lost my composure. Not not say like I acted a fool, but I'm saying like, man, my my faith was at zero. Mm, Jesus, man. Man, my face was that I was like, God, you know, you know, but back to the brand, man, the the entity that came and tapped me on my shoulder is my pops. Mm. You know, my father came and said, let's come out, let's go outside. And what my father said to me, bro, is <clears throat> is a lot of where the brand comes from is that like, son, he told you a lot of things, but he didn't tell you our baby was dead. Wow. Hold up, bro. And, and, uh, and bro, he, he, he tells me, like, man, look, you strap up, you put your armor on, and we go to war. Mm. You know your baby going to fight, <clears throat> so we fight. Now he and, tells uh, you to strap up, put your armor on, and go to war. Man, you could take that multiple different ways in a situation like this. What did your father mean when he said that? Man, he 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 meant a hundred percent, man, that um first of all, first of all, um I know he he understood from a spiritual standpoint, mm. like man, we don't we don't we don't succumb to that type of to that type of news. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We we serve a God that don't that don't we we don't we don't accept that period. We don't I, I hear what that man said, mm -hmm. but we we know what again once you whatever you put in is gonna come out is what my father's saying. Reggie, you understand like like bro, so, many, he, so many dudes would have got the, the same advice, but it would have been retaliation. There we go. And revenge. Bro, you the, the squad in your life, man, can determine so much about how you navigate. Because you were in a very, I mean, how can I even speak to it? But I don't even, I mean, the place that you were in emotionally was vulnerable. Man. And to have a man of God speak into you see a situation like that, bro, it's just whew. and and Myra, man, he's speaking into um first and foremost who I have to be to my children. Mm -hmm. Not not to who I have to be to to the world. The world may be saying, Red, you need to go kill this boy, boy. you need to go handle this business. My father's speaking to me like, bro, this is who you have to be right now. You, you got these two daughters here. You got mm -hmm. your wife on the floor in there. Mm -hmm. You got your mama looking at you. You got everybody looking at you, man. I'm talking, I'm speaking to who we have to be as men right now. Ooh. 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 Boy, that's and then nice. that's not about going to seek revenge. That's not about mm -hmm. going to, because I tell any man, man, and I'll, and, and we'll get deeper into the story, but I tell any man on this side of it, had I went and 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 sought out revenge or 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 you know just succumb to how I felt at the moment, there would have been no worse feeling for somebody to have to come down to a jail cell and tell me like, "Look, your baby is alert and she's looking for you." Like, like again, bro. Like I, the the the. The stabbing wouldn't have been that bad mm -hmm. for, uh, and again, Myron, as men and as fathers, bro, it is our job. Come on, talk to me. Yes, our sir. job. Mm -hmm. And especially when you have, when you have daughters, mm -hmm. like, bro, there is nothing else that they should be 
looking for or looking to other than their dad in the in 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 circumstances like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it is our job to to be there as as the kings that we are. Again, I I I read, um, and we got a, a pastor out here, Tony Evans, man. I read his book at least twice a year, and it, and it, and the book is about kingdom men. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and as a kingdom man, and then, and then you have to realize, Myron, I, I also have another daughter who is looking at that. Yes, this ain't this ain't just about my baby that's that just came out of surgery. Mm-hmm. There's nothing else. Um, and I'm hoping I'm hoping everybody who's watching this, anybody who's who's tapping in, man, understands there's nowhere else for us to be in that circumstance. <sighs> Say it again, bro. It is nowhere else, man. <sighs> Biblically, the Bible says, and, and, and this, these are the things that when you Miles Monroe said, man, in, in, uh, adversity introduces a man to himself. Woo! So mm. when the Bible says that you should anger and sin not. Like, man, that is is that doesn't that means nothing until you have to put it into practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. And, and especially and especially as a man, the Bible does not tell you not to get angry. It don't tell you mm-hmm. not to get upset. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It says anger and sin not. Mm. Woo. But as a father, man. One thing I knew about my kids from being present and and being active in their life every day is that my baby going to fight. My baby going to fight. So who who better to fight with her? Who else going to fight with her? I I don't expect mama to do that. I don't expect my wife to do that. That's my job. And when she and when she hears my voice or when she her sister sees me. They they know that we what we about to go to war. That's the war that my father was talking about. That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, I'm like in the, in the most amazing way. You're thinking every brother that has been tracking and listening to this story. As I'm listening to you, um, my mind immediately goes to my own daughter. Right? It's crazy because my son, his name is Camden. <laughs> my daughter is Taylor, and. And you're thinking, what would I do in that situation? And then that quote from Miles, man, this is, it show you who you are. And man, so many di- directions you could have chosen to fight. But you wouldn't be sitting here right now if you had chosen any other way except chosen the warfare of a man of God. Man, keep telling the story, bro, because I'm, whoo, good <laughs> Lord. And, and look, man, it, it is one of those deals, man, and, 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 um, and I'm getting goosebumps because I'm about to tell you, like, man, maybe had to be the first night, maybe the second night. The the hospital had gotten us a suite, man, because we we had so much family and 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 so many visitors, man. So uh, my wife and I are sleeping in this suite, and man, I just get I just get woke up out of my sleep, and I hear God say. I'm going to give you your baby back. And I'm like, hold on, God. Like, we're like, like, hold on. Like, I'm going to give you your baby back, mm. but this is about you. This, this is about you. And I'm like, God, what do you, what, like, come on, man. Like, what is going on? Like, I don't, I don't want your baby. I don't want your baby. I want you. Mm. Good Lord. Jesus. Like I don't, I don't want your baby. But but the only way that I was going to get out of you what I need is I got to take you through this. I got to take you. I got to take you down through there. Myron, and this is this is this is me being as transparent as I can be, and and especially speaking to men of God. Man, I've I've been a business owner my whole life. Man, I've owned barbershops, salons, all kind of businesses, man. But until my baby was in the hospital fighting for her life, I had never given a hundred percent of anything to God. Mm. My God, you can, you can take my business 90%. You can take, you can take my marriage. You can take my marriage about 70%. 
take my kids, you know, about 50%. But until then, man, I had never given 100% of anything to God. And that's that's 100%. That's, that's pride and ego. That's pride and ego. Like, I, I would give God credit, but I never gave God 100% credit for anything that I felt like mm. I accomplished. <sighs> He and said, this I knew is about you. This is about you. I'm coming for you right now. I, I'm coming for you. I got her. I'm coming for you. Ooh. I'm coming for you. And bro, so we we man and my baby, she was in ICU, man, for eight days, man. And I'm talking about that checking vital signs every 10 minutes, ICU, man. You you're talking about she had to get the complete left side of her skull removed from her head in order to let her brain swell outwardly mm -hmm. so it wouldn't swell internally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man, she got all kind of tubes and, and drainage tubes and one one draining brain fluid, the other one draining blood. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and the stroke, man, the neurosurgeon said my baby had a, had a stroke during surgery that mm -hmm. a 90-year-old wouldn't have. That a 90-year-old wouldn't have. Good Lord. That a 90-year-old would not have. I'm talking about completely paralyzing everything on the right side of my baby's body, man. Um, so <laughs> we didn't know neuro neurolog was it was it the 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 brain was it the stroke was it we, you know man she just fighting for her life and uh, man as we we started to get better um, one of the nurses told us like man she she kind of communicated with me dad i asked her did she did she want the light on or so she squeezed she squares my hand once and you know yes and i told her squeeze it twice for no and um in my shops man and just to kind of veer off in my shops what would happen is anytime any kids come in any of my shops man we have a we we customary pound we we give you this pound so when my girls come in any of my shops, man, they go around to all the barbers, all the stylists, and they give they give this pound. So um, day two or three, man, people start coming in the hospital. And that's how she communicated with them, man. She would squeeze their hand once or squeeze their hand twice. And um, so we knew cerebrally, man, she 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 knew what was going on. She was she was uh, she was alert. But on the second night, man, my wife and I are about to uh, we're about to go back to the suite and go go to sleep. And my wife is like, okay, baby, we love you. Squeeze my hand if you squeeze my hand once if you love me. And squeeze my hand twice to say good night. So she squeezed my wife's hand. And I go on the other side, man. I do the same. Like, man, daddy love you, daddy here, whatever you need. And uh, you know, squeeze my hand if you love me. Man, my baby balls her fist up. And she she wants this pound. <laughs> And bro, if nothing ever spoke to me as a father, that one fist bump said to me something that she didn't want to say to her mama, she didn't want to say to her, her grandparents, something that she didn't want to say to her sister. Like, Daddy, I need you to know I'm good. And, uh, uh, and bro, man, she she uh, she ended up getting out of the ICU, man, after eight days, man. And, and this whole time, Myra, she she has not spoken a word, so we don't even know if she can speak. Right? What her functions gonna be? What we don't know capacity. what her functions are. She got this trach in her mouth, man. We don't know what's going on, bro. And uh, one of my cousins, man, come in. He hadn't been down, and then. And, you know, he's speaking to her going back and forth. And on his way out, he's like, okay, I love you. And, man, she look up and she say, I love you, too. And I'm like, mm. wow. I'm like, God, come on, man. Come on. Come on, sir. Like, come on, God. Come on. Come on. And to this day, she don't even know how important that was for us, man. As we mm. going through, like, okay, God, I see you giving, my, giving me my baby back. Um, but to veer left... 
that's about the time we started having to go to court um, because they had charged the boy with two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon in a juvenile court. And um, and I'm saying that because of the eighth day, that's when they knew what to charge him with. Man, up until then, they thought they were going to have to upgrade or charge him with that with a murder. Mm. Um, <laughs> <It's>, wow. <laughs> that's that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> but we started having to go to these to these uh, preliminary juvenile hearings, man. And uh, man, it's I don't even know how to explain having to watch your daughter because this happened in the cafeteria in the school, man. Mm-hmm. You know, they probably got six, eight different camera angles mm-hmm. in a cafeteria. But having to watch my daughter get stabbed by this little boy, um, man, I don't, I don't even know the descriptive words to put on it, man. Like I don't know what kind of adjective to put on that kind of anger or that kind of that man I'm talking about. But again, I get this same tap on my shoulder. My dad, like, man, come on, let's go outside. We're not watching that. We're not watching that. And again, he is telling me, like, I know how I feel. So I definitely know how you feel. We're not not watching that. Because, again, the war does not it does it does not include revenge. It does not include vengeance. So you're not going to be able to watch that. And not go get this boy. Good. Let's 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 step outside really quick. But every time that we showed up to this court, Myra, and this is these, these are these are these are kind of giving you the layers of the brain. Every time we showed up to this court, man, and I and I kept asking God, like God, tell me what would make a 15-year-old little boy stab a 13-year-old little girl. There was no commotion, it wasn't a fight, there was nothing going on, man, just on some end of the school. He said my other baby said something about his sister a couple of days before. Just some nonsense. God, give me, tell me what would make this little boy stab my baby in the head with a pair of scissors. And every time we showed up to court, I only saw mama. I only saw grandmama. I only saw sister. No male representation at all. And God kept telling me, like, look down there. Like, look down there. I know you don't want to see him. I know you don't want to see his family, but I'm I'm telling you, look down there. You asking for answers. You asking for answers, and I'm gonna give you the answers that you're looking for. Look down there. Who do you see? You see no what you said your son's name is Camden. The 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 pouring into Camden that you would give when it comes to dealing with the opposite sex, this young man never got it. People don't understand most of most of the father figure brand has nothing to do with me. That's who I am. That's who I was long before this. That's who I'm going to be. That's who my father was. That's who my grandfather was. But the brand exists so that we are able to bridge the gap. So I so nobody else has to look down on the other side of no courtroom after your baby been stabbed. And there was no, there was no present father figure. There there we go. It didn't, I didn't see uncle. I didn't see no coaches down there. I didn't, it could have been anybody. It's all of our responsibility to bridge that gap because that's what could have kept my baby from almost losing her life. My 13 year old man spent, she spent a month in diapers like, man, come on. Like, and again, I hear all these men, and you know, Reg, I would have done this and you better than like I'm not, I'm not, I'm better than nobody. But what I am is I'm never going to uh, jeopardize my presence because I make an emotional decision. And I'm talking about one that I probably I I probably would have been vindicated in. I would have probably got pat on my back a hundred times. And nobody would go be mad at you. Nope. That's right. That's right. Nobody. That's right. But but again, 
that that is going to affect the two entities that I don't want anything to affect. That's my marriage and my fatherhood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm never gonna leave my wife in a position to fend for herself in that situation. I'm not gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. And man, you you you're talking about a battle. Um and, and man, we my my girls are 16 now, man. I still have some days where that thing rise back up. Yeah. My my girls, and, and, and let me let me get, let me take you a little bit further in the story, man. So she starts to rehab, um, but during her rehab, man, she she has to learn how to walk, talk, read, write, everything, man. My baby is 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 right hand dominant, man. So she has to learn how to do everything with her left hand and on her left side, and 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 man, uh, and my girls are hoopers, man. They both great athletes, and to have basketball. Um, taken away was was a gift and a curse because a lot of her rehabilitation came through basketball. Mm -hmm. A lot of my other babies' rehabilitation. A lot of the time that we got to spend together, yeah, yeah, dealing yeah, with it, yeah. is 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 because I coached them in the summer, man. I mm -hmm. coached them in summer ball. So me and my baby, one of the hardest things we ever had to do, man, was go out there. I had to coach a game. She had to play a game without my baby. But man, it was it was the most therapeutic moment for both of us because we trying to deal with some things, man, but we, mm -hmm. we found that commonplace. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but as we rehab, man, and we got bro, we 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 saw every neurosurgeon, every nurse, every therapist mm -hmm. has to attribute where my baby is today, a hundred percent to God. Nobody else can get the glory. <laughs> Nobody else can get the glory because y'all told me my baby wasn't gonna talk. Y'all told me my baby would only read at a second grade, second grade level. Y'all told me my baby was gonna be confined to a wheelchair. Y'all told me my baby would never play basketball again. Mm. Myra. I, the first time I ever spoke on this, man, my uncle did a men's conference in Little Rock, Little Rock, Arkansas. And as I'm as I'm telling this same story, and and it, and it you know, it it wasn't as detailed then. Everybody in this church, man, and I'm talking about man, it was probably fifteen hundred men. Everybody in this church thought I was talking about a child that was still in the hospital. <laughs> oh man. Man, man, I called my baby up to the front, man, and this place erupted. Because if if you if you didn't know God prior to this, let me I can show you God. Yeah, I can show you God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My right now, my baby has to hoop with a helmet. It took us. We had to go through UIL, man, for two months to get this helmet approved because they don't realize she had to have her skull taken off. Man, my baby had to. She had to have. Uh, 58 staples to put her head, her head completely shaved. They they think we we trying to get her approved for like a, a commemorative game or she just want to go out there for a couple of seconds. Like, no, nah, we trying to hoop. I tell her every day, like, baby, daddy been around sports my whole life. I'm 45 years old. And I've never seen anybody play basketball with a helmet on. That's right. You are you are one of one. And you are and you are one of one because God made it that way. Mm -hmm. God made it that way. My my baby, right now, man, she is so strong. She is so man, her, her brain almost works better. Like when God say, I'm gonna give you a baby back. <laughs> he said you're gonna restore. Come on, sir. When come on, man. When I'm thinking like I'm gonna let your baby live. Like no no no, I'm gonna give her I'm gonna give her complete restoration. Right right now, her last checkup from her 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 neurosurgeon, Myron, he tests her strength, her cognitive skills, everything. This man tells my 16 year old, if I didn't do your surgery, 
I wouldn't know anything was wrong with you. If I was not there, <laughs> if I was not there when you had a stroke, I would not. I tell my man, again, I own shop. I've seen, I, I know at least 20 people who've, who've had a stroke. But I only know one who has zero remnants of a stroke. Come on. I only know one that it, most people think, Dad, why does she have a helmet on? See, how many concussions did she have? Like, nah, my baby, she had a stroke. She got stabbed. <laughs> she wears she wears she wears a a helmet to protect a piece of her skull that's missing because where she got stabbed. Mm, mm, mm. Myron, I have people in the stands, man, that quit watching the game. Like, hold on, what did you say? Like, yeah, man, she had a stroke. Like, yeah, she just, you see her shooting them free throws, she can still only feel about 85% of, of like the tips of her fingers right now. But, like, man, you, there's absolutely nothing in our situation that is not 100% about the glory of God. <laughs> So I, I got I to gotta ask you this. Um, there's so much goodness in this, man. Um, I feel like what I hear you saying is, is Myron, this brand is not about, and you said this, you said it's not about, it, it was never about me per se and my experience because you, you fortunately, and like I did as well, man, you had a, a great father who had a great father I mean, you're in the middle of the of the trial, the crucible of your life. And it's not many brothers out there that's going to get a man of God to come in and speak into his situation the way that your father did on multiple occasions. I mean, listen, I tell folk all the time, you know, I may never become a billionaire or whatever, but I got a trust fund that's bigger than money. And it's having my daddy in my life as a man of God, like having that thing in your life, man, it's just the, the, the way it connects to this story is just so powerful. And there's so many ways we can go with this, but it's almost like I hear you saying, because of my experience, I look down at this kid. I don't see no men in his life. And as a result, man, of this adversity, ministry a calling came out of this or bigger than apparel so I, I gotta ask you this bro <clears throat> like how can a man who's watching this right now who says man i could never because you probably have brothers say all the time man oh man if it was me it'd be but how many of us men are missing out on those moments where god is trying to propel us to a different level your wife was dependent on you. Your babies were dependent on you not to be in the flesh. There we go. Not to be in the flesh. Y'all was already in adversity. The last thing your family needed was you to be in, in prison. There we go. <clears throat> Talk to that brother right now that's watching who is governed by his feelings, man. Like governed by his emotions. Talk to that brother. Man, and and, and that's a that's a huge part of why I resonate with your movement, your podcast, because it's just not about one area. Again, we can, we cannot be in the flesh in any area. That's in your marriage. That's with fatherhood. That's with manhood. That's on the job. That's anywhere. Or a day. But, or just a day. Like you. Just, just bro, a day. You wasn't playing. I don't know. You was, it was a normal day. That became Man, this is a Monday. This, Myron, this is a Monday. For all I did, I had been dropping my kids off at school since they were in kindergarten. I dropped them off at 7 a.m. on a Monday, and at 7 p.m., we an emergency brain surgery. Bro, you got you better lock in with God because you don't know what any day has. God has God had people, prepared you for that. Man, people saying tomorrow ain't promised, man. The rest of the day ain't promised. Mm, 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 mm. So, and, and speaking to what you're saying, Myron, like, bro, we, there's, 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 no space where where I would tell a man not to have emotions or not to even be emotional. 
Yes, right. But That's I can right. but I can tell you zero percent of the decisions you, you make in that emotions are going to be good decisions. Right. Every one of them. That's right. Every one of them are going to be poor decisions. Zero percent. A hundred percent of them. That's right. That's right. That's in your marriage. That's with your children. That's in adversity. That's on a great day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you make an emotional decision, I can guarantee you that a hundred percent of them are going to be bad decisions. <sighs> bad decisions, bro. Like there's again, think about every man that's watching us right now can find a reason to validate me going to get this little boy. Every one of them. But I could not validate that to my girls. I could not validate that to my wife. Because at the end of the day, now there is a missing entity for us as well. And and this brand speaks to, and and, and I and I tell people, man, that you know, I get a lot of people like Reds, what separates your brand and apparel? Like, man, I see a lot of people in the father space. Mm-hmm. I see a lot of people in the dad space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, but it's only one brand that's dominating the father figure space. My my brand is not just about biological father. Yeah. And I'm and I'm gonna and I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you the most important piece about that for me. That the the man that I'm telling you about that I got the shoulder the taps on my shoulder my that is not my biological father. Come on, man. I was not raised by my biological father, Mark. Talk to me, Reggie. Talk to me. Come on. And that's about relationship. That's about commitment. That's about stepping in and filling a gap. Stand in the that's gap. That's what these F2 stand for. Mm-hmm. Father figures. Bro, uh, I mean, there's so much more to this uh to this wow. interview. Wow. I literally <laughs> came on, I had to literally Dude. cut it short. Um, there was a like, <clears throat> like a plot twist at the end of that thing, man. A plot it's, twist. Man. You know, like I'm, I'm following this thing, and it's it's mind blowing for the whole thing. And in in the last like what minute thirty seconds, when he says the man who was tapping me on my shoulder was not my biological father, it's like what? Now here's what's worse, <clears throat> I mean, and just if we could put a pin in that, I mean that. So. We go on talking another 10, 15 minutes, and there it was just so much more that could have been shared, but just for the sake of time, we couldn't. He probably put that up later or somewhere. Yeah, you got yeah it. man. Yeah. Then he says to me, he said, hold on one second. I want you to see something. I'm sitting there waiting five, you know, two, three minutes. In comes this 17-year-old girl, man. I mean, it's his daughter. Nothing's wrong with her, man. Wow. I mean... I broke down crying when I saw her, man. Dude, you gotta you gotta show that. We gotta see I, I didn't that, I didn't record that part. We had we had ended the recording <sighs> and I was done. Wow. He brought her in, man, and, and he woke her up from sleep. She was taking a nap. She comes in. And I'm telling you, bro, there's nothing wrong with her. There's nothing wrong with her. Whoa, I mean, for awesome. those of you who are just uh tuning in or I don't know, maybe somehow you were asleep uh while this podcast was going on. Uh, we were interviewing uh, Reggie uh, George. He is the founder and the owner of the Father Figure brand. And um, he was sharing uh, his why, if you will, mm-hmm. why mm-hmm. the brand started. And in summary, his uh, daughter was uh, stabbed by a 15-year-old boy at, at lunch in the cafeteria at school in broad daylight in front of other people. And she sure. literally almost died. Uh, spent eight hours in surgery, several weeks in the hospital. Um, eight days and in the ICU, yeah. Yeah, just, you know, anyway. And so he was sharing his journey with that. And so anyway, Kimon, I know there were so many uh, notes that I know that you and I were taking. Those of you who are watching us live, those uh, would you please share uh, in the comments uh, your thoughts, uh, maybe some questions that you, that you have. Yeah, we got to uh, discuss insights this. Insights that you got yeah. out of this. Yeah, and even um, if you're watching this on delay, man, put some of the stuff in the comments. What's yeah, really jumping man. out at you? You know, <clears throat> it's interesting to me um, that your preparation, like you, as you said, it, this was a regular day. This is a regular day that he drops his daughters off. There's no like, hey, you know, let me just prepare you. This is going to be 
whatever, but the preparation that he, he had been doing um, and then the community that he has, like his, his father, is what helped him to make it through something that you really could never really be prepared for, right? It's like, there's no class you could take on this. There's no like workshop you could take on this. As he said it, adversity introduces a man to himself. So it's almost as whatever you've been putting in comes out during those moments. That was the question, I, you know, we asked too. We were saying, um, does adversity make a man or mm-hmm. does adversity reveal the character of a man? And, you know, after listening to this interview um, uh, with, with Reggie, I, I feel like it's both, right? Yeah, it's both. I feel like, um, you know, experiences obviously make us who we are. But, man, isn't there such a large part of who we are as men that often gets exposed, you know, through adversity? Sure, and I sure. think that's what you were saying. Like all these decisions that we have made, the kind of people we become. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I'm thinking about the entire time I'm listening to him is just—it's hard not to, right? Is like, yeah, you, you I put it. my man of myself in his shoes, and I'm saying, yeah, man, yeah, what am yeah. I doing here? And what am I? What step? What? Am... <sighs> yeah. But he yeah. had his dad in his life, and you know, there's a shift. The whole shift framework that we emphasize, get your shift together. You know, the biggest thing on there is the T, which is tribe. And yeah. so much of who we are, so much of what, um, you know, guides us in terms of who we become and, you know, the decisions we make is about who who is around us. Yeah. Because you're some things, honestly, like you can't, like, I think the solo person who can handle everything by themselves is probably a myth, Right. You need community. Like in that moment, Reggie needed his father. He needed <laughs> another man. And I think for he a lot another of man. Us, he needed yeah. another man. That's true. Right. And I, sometimes That's we right. think That's right. in, That's in right. my hardest moments, I'm going to retreat, be by myself. Mm-hmm. But by yourself, you can make a lot of bad decisions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's good to have people around you, even people who see you when you're trying to, you know, just kind of sneak off and be alone. Like, no, I'm not going to let you be alone here. Adversity introduces a man to himself. That's yeah. Then the other, another statement man, that we, I know, and you and I, we just so many things. He says, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, he said, I'm going to give you your baby back, but this is about you. I don't yeah. want your baby. I want you. And yeah. again, you know, as I'm listening to Reggie, I'm thinking about myself and I'm just thinking, you know, the, the stewardship of opportunity kind of came in my mind. And, you know, although that didn't seem like an opportunity mm-hmm. because it was a crisis, yeah, you know, yeah. something happened to them, yeah. but that's not how he saw it. I mean, as God was speaking to him and as, as he was hearing, he felt like this is not happening to me. This is happening for me. I'm going to take care of your daughter. But, dude, I, there's something I'm trying to do in you. <laughs> and I'm just wondering, like, how many brothers out there, man, you know, myself included, have missed these moments with God, these God moments where God yeah. is trying to get through to us. He's trying to make men out of us. He's trying to lead us in God. These are those Abraham moments. You know, when I'm, when I say come to come and, you know, uh, you know, take your son, your only son. I'm, the, those, the, those are the moments that many of men find themselves in. And honestly, this goes back again to what we were talking about in terms of adversity, you know, showing us who we are. It's like, we, we missed these moments. The, yeah. A brand came out of this. A movement came out of this. A, uh, 1,500 men in a church were inspired by this. How many yeah. times have we missed out on that service, mission, and purpose part because we were in the flesh when we were confronted with these issues? You know what I'm saying? You see, I think sometimes, right, like what I'm hearing with Reggie and and <clears throat> so many of us, there would be no father figure brand. There would be no all of the stuff that we're talking about if Reggie didn't get to work on him first. Like this, this had to be about him first before it started to be about a brand and a movement and speaking and all that, it had to be about him. I think so many times we miss the development that could happen to us, right? In the stuff that's happening. I mean, I think about how many times something happens, it feels like a setback and it's nothing compared to what he just shared, but I'm in my feelings. I'm like, you know, woe is me enough, nothing, you know, like, and I'm missing the development there instead of seeing something can be happening in me, right? Something is developing in me. I'm like, ah, mm-hmm. whatever, you know, and I'm missing the development. Never jeopardize. He said, never going to jeopardize my presence by making an emotional decision. And I've heard people say that different ways. I've heard people say, 
you know, don't make a temporary decision, um, you know, or somebody having temp- you know, for permanent that has permanent, you know, outcomes and yeah, yeah, yeah. And so on, something like that. But um, yeah, that that also jumped out to me because, and somebody just you know said it who, who's who's listening um uh, in the comments they they were saying I appreciate the role of the grandfather's guidance actually it's his father not his grandfather, uh, to his son on how to respond. I also appreciate Reggie's ability to discern God's guidance now. You know, this, you know, we talk about the shift and we talk about the tribe, right? And then the spiritual part. And listen, we ain't going to never shy away from that, Kimon, because the truth of the matter is, is when I look at somebody like Reggie, who is very successful, who has multiple businesses, you know, this is just one thing that he does, you know, mm-hmm. in addition to other things. You know, he has built made some, some great partnerships, Deion Sanders, other people. You go, if you check out his, his, uh, his page, we'll talk more about that. But this brother is dialed in with God, bro. Mm-hmm. He had to hear God's voice, man. I mean, and especially in a moment like that, that's something we take for granted sometimes that, you know, and, and he was not shy about it. Like, bro, listen, honestly, man, God, this was about the glory of God. Like so many of us, man, have not cultivated that relationship yeah. with God because maybe we got issues with church or we got issues with religion. Bump all of that. What about a Monday? that you didn't plan for, mm. right? Yeah. That you that you didn't know that this is going to be the Monday that my daughter is going to get stabbed. This guy, he's talking about how he was at the, um, how he's at the hearings. And mm. of course, as part of the evidence, they have to show the video yeah, in the cafeteria yeah, yeah. of his daughter getting stabbed yeah, yeah, yeah. and bleeding out. Like, dude, you got to be locked into God for a Monday. That's what I was thinking yeah. about. I, I need yeah. him for Monday. Forget church and all this other stuff. There is a Monday that will come in all of our lives where we're going to have to be dialed in. Yeah, I think, and part of, you know, this is something we could flesh out more. We got to redefine what spirituality means. It doesn't mean in a building, raising hands, singing songs. Man, it's about hearing from God and him, him being able to say, man, God told me this. That's <laughs> what I think all of us need, man. You need, yes. you need to be able to say, in my most difficult moment, the decision I'm making is not a decision I make on my own. I'm getting help. I'm getting help from God. I'm getting help from others in my tribe. And I think that's what real spirituality is. It's not just, you know, rituals and routines and that kind of stuff, but it's being able to hear from God. And I think that's powerful. Absolutely. Well, he says here, um, yeah, go ahead. Make, an, make an emotional decision. I can guarantee you 100% of them will be a bad decision. <laughs> Every not, you know, time. I mean, I think I, I think sometimes we glorify like men who are just driven by their emotions. Man, I just went off on him. Like, no, that's that's not strength. That's not real strength. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not what it really means to be strong when your emotions rule you. Mm. No, real strength is when you're able to rule your emotions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and there's so much I got out of this thing, man. So, <clears throat> yes, it's it's endless, really, man. Um, so how can we connect with this guy's stuff, man? Because I am, I'm down. Yeah, so you need to go to his website, um, you know, F2, F2, like Frank2, F2 apparel.store is where you can find his merch. F2 apparel.store is where you can find his merch and, um, you know, and support him. I'm actually wearing uh, one of his hats right now. That's that's kind of that's kind of dope. So the trucker hat and I got a shirt that uh, he sent me every day is Father's Day, man. I mean, Dude, he's, doing something, he's doing something special for those who are listening and watching this. Mm-hmm. Get a promo code SHIFT10. You get 10% off of anything uh, you buy once you uh, have a, a cart value of $50. So go on there, uh, use SHIFT10 and get 10% off. Appreciate uh, Reggie and his partnership so we can spread this message. Yeah, I mean, any other any other thoughts though, Kimon? Um, you know, as we yeah, as we close, because I want to take a moment right now while I'm even doing this to um to to get his Instagram, uh, because I did give him a chance to talk a little bit about you know where you can follow him on Instagram, but he he's got some great stuff, just great content on Instagram, uh, in general, and uh, I wanted the guys to be able to follow him. Uh, his Instagram page is Father Figure Apparel, Father Figure Apparel, Father Figure Apparel. Uh, on Instagram, yeah. and I'm I'm fairly certain that that's what it is on the other platforms as well. Uh, Reggie George was our guest. Uh, we interviewed him on all things concerning uh, business, but it ended up switching uh, to all things concerning men and adversity. And yeah. um, again, you can find his apparel at uh, on his website. 
uh, which is uh, the father of F2 apparel dot store. And we highly encourage you to support his brand. He's got some dope stuff, some nice stuff. Deion Sanders rocks his stuff. Y'all uh, promo code is a uh, shift 10. And of course his Instagram is uh, at father figure apparel, but any closing thoughts that you have? Yeah. On I'll, this? Yeah. I'll tell you what jumped in my head, by the way, I think sometimes we should repeat what shift means, right? So the S is for spirituality, H mm-hmm. is for health and wellness, I for integrity, F for family and T is for tribe. So when we say get your shift together, we mean win in those areas. I'll tell you what would hit me is when he said, and he looked down um, at the guy in the courtroom and saw no father figures. And it challenged me because I, I feel like he's, he challenged all of us that we need to stand there, stand in the gap for some, some young man who may not have a father figure in his life. And so I just hope that it inspires not just me, but the rest of men watching this, to find another young man, to mentor, to pour into, to stand in the gap for. Yeah, it was almost like he is, I mean, and I spoke to him at at length. He was like, God wanted him to see that picture of that young man with no men in his life to reconnect him with the blessings that God had given him that he was not raised by his biological father. And, uh, you know, we have this line that you and I have gotten exposed to in some of our uh, coaching circles and stuff that we've been using a lot. And I've heard it in a number of different, uh, you know, environments. And I think it's 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 a good way to end. You are perfectly designed to mm-hmm. help and equip. You're perfectly designed and equipped to help the former version of yourself. That's what Reggie is doing. Yeah. Right. Here's a here's a brother that wasn't raised by his father, but a father figure stepped in his life. And thus the brand, what ministry, you know, what passion, what calling yeah. um, have, have you been called to my brother based on your experience? Reggie George is a great example of that. And again, we do also want to uh, shout out our sponsor uh, for today. Uh, shout out to Joseph in Wange um, for what he is doing with the financial legacy Academy. Financial legacy Academy is the preferred financial Uh, growth and development course that you can take. I said preferred. And I know there's a lot of courses out there. There's one real popular one. But if you are a person who is looking to be a millionaire with a purpose, this This is is the course for you. This is it. And you just need to go to myronedmonds.com forward slash money. All right. All right, fam. Listen, man, y'all stay locked in to the Get Your Shift Together podcast. Please do us a favor And give us a review, like, comment, and share. Do all that good stuff so that we can grow this podcast and we can help as many men as possible win in the things that matter. All right, we out. Holla at you, Kimo. All right, man. of Get Your Shift Together Men's Podcast. For more information, please visit our website, menswinningcircle.com. That is, menswinningcircle.com. Let's win.